Recording is started, so all private conversations are going to be online. She was not very good in general. Uh, <laughs> it is. Yeah. 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 So, <laughs> 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 Are we ready, Lisa? Mm -hmm. I will uh, call this case. Kate is running two minutes late. Uh, and excuse me, has been Get started. Uh, before we do start, though, I will say Kate will be here in a couple of minutes, and I actually have to leave at 6:45. So. Uh, she'll take over when she gets there. Otherwise, I think John will ask you to, to do it if, if she continues to be delayed. Um, so we're starting with two public hearings. I will start by opening the public hearing. So acting as I'll read it out loud so that everyone knows exactly what we're doing. Acting as water and sewer commissioners, the select board will discuss and act upon the setting of municipal water and sewer rates in accordance with RSA 35 colon 7. The proposed rates may be viewed at is a web address. Uh, do I need a motion to open the hearing or can I just clear it uh, A motion will have okay. a motion to open public hearing. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Public hearing is open. Lisa has the uh, proposed rate sheet online and we have it in front of us. Are there initial comments from the board? If not, we will start take public comment and input. Jean. Um, Jean Patton, I'm just wondering if there's any possibility at all to just try to get a hold of things a little better for taxpayers to keep it at a 5% increase instead of 7%. Um, I think I saw it. And is there a presentation? For uh, Jim, you're here. Is there? Do you want to give a yeah. summary of what? Or Ed, either one. Eric, I can go ahead and kick it off, and I'll turn it over to Jim fairly quickly. But you know, looking at the increases from Lebanon, and then looking at the in the water side, the upcoming SRF loan payments, and on the sewer side, you know, trying to get caught up with our negative fund balance, which still has another year to get caught up. Um, we did talk about 5% increases and we talked all the way up to 10% and we think this is the, I guess, the happy medium of the two, which will keep us above above board a little bit moving forward and also prepare us for the future without being being too much. So I turn it over to Jim. He can talk a little bit more about the Lebanon increases and kind of where we're at on the water and sewer side. Yeah, so uh, Lebanon's uh, sewer rates for wastewater treatment has gone up um, 5%. Um, and the 5% is it's for every gallon of water that we send there. Um, in this town, unfortunately, we have a, a pretty significant um, infiltration and, and uh, inflow issue. And so we don't get paid for every gallon of water that gets sent there, um, or we don't bill for that number. So this year especially was a little tricky with all the extra rainwater that we had. We had a lot of groundwater all throughout the summer 
And so the flows were a little higher than what we had seen the previous year. Um, and so this 5%, um, I think that's what Lebanon charged that they had been running at like 7.8 or 7.7%, something like that the last four or five years. And they backed down, but we thought it was smart to, to um, stay at the 7% so that we can also cover our own expenses because um, beyond the wastewater treatment, um, you know, I'd love to keep it at 5%, but I, I can't name one thing that we, that we purchased or used, labor, anything that has gone up 5%. Everything has been higher than that. And, you know, some of the materials that we pay on the water and sewer side are, you know, they're, they're not going up 5%. They're going up 100% in the last two or three years. Um, you know, metal pipe, that kind of thing has gone up, you know, very, very significantly. And so as a, as a result, we kind of need to keep pace. We know what, what happens if we don't do anything. You know, we end up with a, a terrible deficit. And that's what we did through the, the mid-2000s. We didn't the rates fast enough or at all in some some years and so we get we got behind and one, one another, another comment on that same line uh, this year we did undergo a project for scoping the sewer looking for water infiltration sites and the results of that jim correct me if i'm wrong but you guys are looking at how to address some of those based yes on that. yeah we we found um you know there's there's different orders of, of of severity we've we found two or three places that are you know very bad um they're not easy to deal with because one of them is i think 24 feet below the surface of the of the road um and then we uh, have a lot of manhole covers uh manhole chimneys that were bricked up in the in the mid 80s and the, the mortar has just just fallen apart with all the vibration from vehicles and so forth so we're going to have you know, two or three big digs, and, and I think we're probably going to have about 50 or 55 manholes that need to be rebuilt, um, the, the, the tops. And the nice thing now is that they do have precast pieces that, <clears throat> excuse me, that take the place of the uh, of the bricks and mortar. Um, so they, they're shaped and they're, they're very strong. And so you only have, you know, two grouted joints instead of 50 on, a, on a, an individual manhole. And so I... We, we've done several, I think we've done 10 or 12 in the last three or four years, um, and they seem to be working really well. And so um, the camera scope, scoping work has been done. And so we're kind of going through the data to come up with, you know, the individual projects, the big dig project, the manhole project, and if there's other other things that we can do, maybe on services or something like that, that, that would help. Um, those will be hopefully bid before the end of the winter for a, a summer summer work. So the, this will be an expense, but hopefully one that's going to save us money long term. That's right. Yeah, because there's there was a ARPA grant money that was involved, and then we had approved a town meeting a, a you know a, a, a loan um, that was going to be offset by partially by the grants. Um, but that money has been approved, and that's the money that we, well it won't come out of the normal budget out of project monies. But but it is an effort to address some of the exactly. known problems. That's, that's right. Um, the infiltration is obviously not the responsibility of um, the users that are paying for water and sewer, but uh, um, something that uh, reflects um, the condition of the town's roads uh, as much as anything else. If I understand correctly. And yet the um, costs of flooding the sewer are borne exclusively by users. Is that correct? Yes. Well, I mean, there's nobody else using the sewers that are in the, the mains of the road. But plenty of people yeah, I can. Roads. Oh, yeah. 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 But the other thing, I... too, is you know, we've had a lot of service line issues, too. And, and um, my, my brother runs the Meriden system. They just went through this. And, and you know, 60% uh, of their biggest issues for the infiltration were on individual service lines because they are attached to the thing and they go out and quite often they just took old pipes and sort of you know kind of blended them into the new the new sewer system from the old and so they weren't done you know the way they probably should have been done Do you have an estimate of how much of the um sewage that we send to um lebanon is Due to infiltration, 
versus use by users? Um, this year, it was probably going to be about 40%. And last year, with it being dry, it was more like like 15. Yeah. Which is why having that project underway is important for a rate discussion. But the actual details are a little limited here. Yes? Susan Brown, I moved to Enfield. There was sand in my water. And finally, they came and they found it. In, I think in the filter thing where they measure the water and they took it out. It's coming back. Since you started on May Street, I've had nothing but brown water and I'm getting a little sick of it and I'm paying full price for it. I've come and talked to Jim. I've given him some uh, some pictures and I'll bring you some water. But I would like to have clean water and I would like it not to be brown. It, it has a commenter. Yes, I just wanted to clarify a little bit of what um, Dave Buffet had said that um, he had said that this is a road issue. This is not a road issue. I mean, the cars driving by did cause the sewer system to develop some cracks in the chimney that went in, but it's a sewer system issue. And so it's sewer system money that has to pay for that. <clears throat> Are there other comments from public? That is a lot of money on talking taxes. <laughs> <laughs> John uh, I have a couple of just questions. Uh, one, will the deficit be fully paid off at the end of next year? It appears that it'll be paid off fully in 2024 with a little bit extra to spare. Um, of course, okay. that's based on user fees and how much water is actually used. But as of right now, the projections show it getting paid off this next year. Okay. <clears throat> Still looks like it. So we can. So that's great. That 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 has worked. We repaid our debt, and we should be able to drop that column if everything goes well next year. Uh, yeah, we'll have to look at that. The other thing we need to do in the near future is um, find a consultant or somebody that can help us with a longer term rate study that'll be much better than us sitting down looking at these numbers and trying to figure out where it needs to be. Oh. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> the second question is uh, the connection fee at the bottom. Um, it, is that per unit per property? How is that assessed to new connections? That is, is to, um, to a new connection at, a, at an individual lot. Okay, so per lot, so no Sounds difference true. between 100 units and one unit. It do, we don't have the any, okay. any any relationship to numbers of units at this point, but that's something we really should take a look at. Okay. Yeah, that is something we've been talking about is putting together some sort of equation that takes into those different metrics into account. <laughs> <clears throat> Are there questions or comments from the board? Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, no, at, at some point, you know, we're at the mercy of Lebanon. One, one of the things we face. Um, and I apologize for being a little yep. bit late. Um, so I may have missed this. Do the proposed fees adequately cover all of our current operating costs for water and sewer? I know in the past, the um, and it's unfortunately the relatively recent past, but more than six years ago, we didn't charge users enough when Lebanon went up. Will this cover Lebanon's increase? Yes. Okay. Yes. And whatever our additional uh, Exactly. So done. the Lebanon's F was, uh, I think they adopted 5.2 a couple weeks ago, effective okay. January 1st. And this is this is seven. And so the other is, is for our own, you know, our own in, increased expense load. I have a whole list of questions, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, do the proposed fees align with the water asset management plan and the wastewater systematic management plan? We had that sewer kind of phase two that's supposed to kick off in 2024, where the, I think the pump stations were pretty pricey. So that was those payments were going to get phased in originally as the deficit. So I'm just wondering how that's going to play out. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know if Ed wants to answer that, but yeah, I, I think one of the things that we talked about is when the sewer deficit number ends, 
is to leave some or all of that in place to address you know future expenses and replacements that are needed. I mean, our pump stations now are 40 years old and and yeah. um, you know one or two of them need, need some some overhaul. And so, you know, where where does where do we, you know, how do we charge for that? How do we account for that? You know, we do qualify for some grant money. We'll get some grant money, but it's probably still going to be a you know pretty big number. So any water and sewer numbers for, you know, that involve construction or or overhauling stuff. I mean, they're they're big numbers, and and um, you know, but but again, very important. But you know, the way the lake was. 50 years ago compared to what it is today, you know, it was, it was a good investment. And I, I, I absolutely, you know, believe in that. That's actually my last question. We come to the point where we would be better off with our own sewer system. We have our own water system. That ship sails. That, that, that has been studied a couple of times. The short answer is no, we would not. Uh, just from a pure cost standpoint, and for the sake of time tonight, I think we should have that. That discussion should be outside of this individual well, it's just, right here. It's but, it's just a question, yeah, because it, no, it is, and there was a study just three, four years ago. It, it yeah. is on the town website. Yeah, yeah, yeah that we can, that we can get for you, and yeah. But that if you want to give us like twenty six million, yeah, I have a sewer easy in my backyard. Right. <laughs> yeah, so the, this this the the answer from that study was that it was significantly more expensive to do that than to continue the status quo of sending sewage to Lebanon. Because one of the other, you know, I'm on the zoning board. One yeah. of the other things I'm thinking about is there was a question about putting huge apartment houses up on mm -hmm. the other side of Route Four or way yeah. up there, mm -hmm. and they haven't got the permits yet. But that's going to be a, a whole a lot of people. Yes, and, and we have, and that ties in with the question about the uh, connection fees, because obviously the impact of 100 units is different than the impact of one unit uh, on things like pumping stations and the infrastructure in general. Um, so having a, a, a more, more uh, developed plan for that makes sense. We do have sewage capacity in Lebanon, so we're not going to run into a situation where we can't send them sewage. Um, and I know Jim's putting together water plans for what, how many we can take the water side there. The production of our wells is, you know, is being under consideration um, for adding, adding things at the moment. We have not had a, had to limit any development based on water or sewer capacity. We know we have sewer capacity, <clears throat> water capacity is being reviewed. John Crow, I have a question on, um, let's see, going back to uh, December 17th, 2018 meeting on page four, it said the board was tasked to transfer 25,000 from the water operating fund to the water capital reserve fund. Apparently that passed. How does that thing, when we pay our water bills, mm -hmm. Lebanon's asking for 5%, you're asking for an extra 2%. Mm -hmm. Does anything go into the actual reserve fund to cover the things like your manholes? Um, so the water and the sewer are separate funds. So the water is purely an infield item. And I, John and Kate can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that any capital reserves come from rate payers and then get yeah. moved into the capital reserves just as that was done. Yeah, and we just recently had a public hearing last meeting um, in which we unfortunately weren't able to put in. We uh, opted to not put in and also had to take out because we had, Jim can tell you, um, was it two failures? Four. Four. On the water side, yes. Four. Okay. Yeah. So, and there were significant expenses. Yeah, we use that. That particular capital reserve is to sort of keep the rates even because you know, the, the expenses tend to come in bunches. And, and, you know, this particular year, you know, we spent, I think, 75 or 80,000 doing well work because we had, you know, some planned failures. We had some failures that just happened, but we sort of knew were going to happen and we had a lightning strike. So, you know, we had these big expenses and, you know, because we have, I think it's like 180,000 in that capital reserve, we were able to draw on that for this year and 
hopefully next year we can start putting the 25 back in and kind of you know pay ourselves back if you will um while still having some money for emergency so it is an example with the capital reserve work this year we had enough the capital reserves to cover those unexpected capital expenses without adjust without changing the rates because of them and when you look at the water asset management plan it's very long, but it's it's interesting. Uh, it's kind of all outlined the way and the the way we add to it, the reasoning behind it, because you're trying to save forward so that when you go, you aren't trying to take it up an entire chunk in one year. You're trying to save forward and then do the project, <laughs> so it doesn't hit the rate. Right, that comes from rate payers as well. Yes, everything. Yeah, if you use it, you pay yeah. it. Right, that's. Yeah, and you know, one thing, one pressure that you know we haven't talked about yet is is the regulatory pressure. And you know, on the on the water side, we've been told by um, the EPA that we need to do a service line lead survey that we have to do within the next year. No. And then we've also been told that within ten years after that's complete, that we're going to need to address any known and unknown lead issues that go into e everybody's house. So. No longer is the is the end of the town responsibility the the main. It's it's going to be the 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 interior of the house. So, um, you know that that's that's one place where you know the EPA that they basically just said, "Hey Jim, guess what? You're going to be spending 200 um, staff hours this winter putting together a lead survey plan for the town of Envy." And you know they they've got some grants and things that they put towards having some engineers you know, help us, but they, they've never been in that field and they, they don't know the system and they don't know people, they don't know anything. They basically will just, you know, sort of pull together the stuff that we provide for them and, you know, kind of collate it into their template. And then, um, you know, on the, on the sewer side, um, you know, we have to do more, more testing and so forth as, as Lebanon's plant gets upgraded and the discharge discharge into the Connecticut River, um, you know, those regulatory things get more significant and more severe. Um, you know, they have to make upgrades and they in turn, you know, pass that on to their users of which Enfield is one. And, and so those, you know, those are expenses that, you know, it's a thou shalt. It's not a, you know, hey, when you, when you get around to it, let's, 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 you know, put, to, put aside some money. It's like, no, you're going to do this now. And so that that that's that's tough. Are are people still dumping sewage into our lakes? Probably some. <laughs> Do we know? Is there a way to find out? There, there are no, not that. Um, I think we're going to bring this back to the sewer rates yeah. of the sewer system rather than discuss the environmental impacts and potential failed septics. Okay. Um, which is a big discussion, but it's not the discussion for this moment. Um, are there other, a lot of this has been good input and good comments. Are there other comments from anyone around? About? Any other comments for the public hearing from the board? Tim, what percentage of the uh, increase is going to be due to the project costs, as you've described them, or is that coming strictly out of the reserve fund? You mean the, the project that we're working on now? No, the project costs, as you've described, the infiltration issue. Uh, oh, yeah, no, that, that that's an approved project at town meeting of which, you know, I think probably 30 or 40 percent of that would be um, ARPA grant money that, that, that we have access to. And um, so, you know, built into this this rate, we can probably start handling those those payments. I mean, I don't have the exact schedules on or loan you know reimbursements or terms and that kind of stuff but but we have been trying to creep these up a little bit so that we don't have to you know hammer everybody with a huge increase year one of the loan uh, so a certain percentage of the future payments will be in the rate structure yes oh yes yeah and then again has a comment on that as well yes thank you eric um <clears throat> Yeah, we won't know exactly what that percentage is. Um, SRF loans work a little bit different than others. They give you the money. They all usually come with some sort of forgiveness. And then the loan gets closed out once the project's done, and that's when they set the interest rates and payments. So we won't know that till the projects are completed, but they're 
they're almost always a lot lower than you can get from any bank interest. And then they do come with the 100% forgiveness of a portion of those fees. So um, we are, I mean, part of this 7% and part of our discussion was making sure that we're ramping up a little bit of money to be able to cover that first payment when it does come. <clears throat> I, I, I've been told several times by different people in town, the former budget committee and former slot and things like that, that the only way our prices on water will ever, and so will ever come down is if we increase the user base. I don't see how we can increase the user base with increases every single year. Everybody I thought should it that lives in the town and knows what we pay for water. First thing they say is there's no way I'm going to bring earth I didn't ever go on to mm -hmm. town water or sewer. So how how are we gonna get more customers, people to sign up for with these kind of prices? Yeah, so that, that's a little, that's a big question. One way certainly is if there are large developments and we know of at least two that have been considered in the past and neither one has happened. But that is the kind of thing where they have no choice, really. Oh, it's a requirement. No, it's not a requirement. It's a financial reality. You know, no big developer is going to want to create a, a sewage and water system for a uh, hundred houses mm -hmm. or However, apartments. One one thing that the town is in the middle of well is starting a rewrite of the zoning. Uh, that's and that is a place where you can. The town can make decisions around, say, density, which would ameliorate some of the sort of per unit costs of, of having them from a developer standpoint. But we can make decisions in that in that respect. To allow, you know, if you allow more units, the developer is more attractive. If you allow fewer units, they're less attractive. And there's positives and negatives in both directions for you know lots of different things. But that that's one one thing the town is actively doing over the next year is undergoing a zoning rewrite, which should be on the ballot in 25, uh, which would have some impact towards your question. Yeah, we, we did um, add 131 units at Lakeview Condominiums in 2017. And that that was a that was a great win for the for the sewer system in that that they paid their own infrastructure costs. So we didn't have that. We operate the pump station at the base of the hill. Um, but you know the the it's it's pretty much runs itself. It's a it's a it's a simple setup and it, and it pumps the, the wastewater down to Shaker Village where then it is in turn pumped to Lebanon. Um, but that that was a you know 131 customers and and you know I believe that that helped our system tremendously. And if we could you know find another another similar project or pick up some more people that were interested in adding on that maybe already had houses and had problems. Lakeview, they they were looking at um, spending twice what they spent to to extend the sewer on replacing their own um, bleach fields. They had 18 different on lot uh, drainage fields that they've been using for over 40 years and they never put a nickel away to uh, to replace those. And so they they, they were considering what the best way to go is. And I said, you know what, we're going to solve this once and for all. And and they they worked with us to put together a project to, to get that done. And, and, uh, and I think as a result, I think the property values there have tripled in mm -hmm. yeah. six years. The sum was listed for 310,000. I could have bought 10 of them for 89,000 yeah. in 2017 <laughs> when they were stressed. Yeah, yeah. 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 Are there any other comments or questions? Can I just come back to Susan, your comment earlier, you made a remark about the the water in your house is brown and sandy. And you said you've been talking to Jim and others in the town about that. Do you feel like your concerns are being addressed or do we need to follow up on that more? <laughs> I think Jim's trying, but I've been in that house since now since I bought it in 2009. I've been in it since December 2015, seven years. And the sand was a problem, but I could manage it. But the brown water is really getting to me. I, I really, I figured if I came and I said it out loud, I'd be heard. I appreciate that as a fellow 
water drinker at home. <laughs> I appreciate that. It's, you know, most it's Let's most likely it's, it's iron and, and then, you know, a lot of the pipes in Susan's district are, you know, they're 123 years old. And so, mm -hmm. you know, they're not they're not super clean. So with the movement of the water, it, it tends to break some of the iron off the walls of the pipe. Um, and uh, you know, we, we try to flush it to try to you know keep it as clean as possible, but that doesn't always solve the problem. But luckily I have not had a lot of um, a lot of complaints about brown water here and there, but not not in general. And I'm sure you've done all sorts of testing to make sure it's not um, bacterial contamination. Oh gosh, we I think we've done yeah, fifty so samples of water that, for different that, things over the course of this past year. Uh, that one of the house. There's nothing yeah. else. I take a motion to close the public hearing. I move we close the public hearing. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Excuse me. Uh, okay, so public hearing is closed. Any discussion from the board? No, it's always hard to see that kind of a raise, but I think in this case it is necessary. It's one of the ways we're planning for the future and one of the ways we're keeping the system intact. Um, so we I think got to bite the bullet and do it. Yes, I, I think I agree with John. My only comment going forward is I think in 24, we need to take a review of the connection fees mm -hmm. and evaluate what direction we want to go with those. No question about that. I think I'd like to see us to talk to Lebanon. You know, they're good partners on many things, um, and they stocked us with a pretty solid fee increase on connections and see what kind of latitude and if we're absorbing some of their public projects that they that don't impact our lines. Mm -hmm. I feel that we shouldn't be absorbing any of their wastewater separation projects that they didn't do when there was federal funding available. And Field mm -hmm. didn't ever have that because we chose not to commingle it. Mm -hmm. So I, I do worry about that. I know Lebanon had their own issues with rates and learned the hard way about having someone who is qualified calculate them. So I really can't stress enough that we need to look at our whole rate structure. Um, I just, I think it's, it's a challenge each time you look at this, we have so many different rates and I know there's a lot of reasons why. So I guess the question is how do we make it equally unfair to everybody? <laughs> because there's no, there's no happy way to pay for water. It's right, so a good point you make about Lebanon and the added expenses they have incurred for their own uh, issues. So it would something we have to keep track of. Yeah. Okay. There's no further discussion. I understand motion. Motion to approve. I move we accept the proposed rates as presented this evening. I'll second that. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. The water rates are approved. At this point, Kate, I will pass. Oh, you want to do you? both of us? Well, I've got to run out in oh, that's 13 right. minutes I'm so to make a concert. So. Yes, that is important. I had to fetch my child, surprise so. to fetch my child from the bus there when they go. didn't bring her home again. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> or I would say not from the bus. The bus didn't do their job. Um, so we are on public hearing at number two. And I apologize because I, since I didn't have time to go back on my glasses, um, which is to discuss and accept donations to the Community Nursing Program Fund in excess of $10,000 in aggregate. We have a motion to open the public hearing. So moved. Give a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Abstentions? It passes unanimously. Okay, and I'm assuming you gave them the rules on public hearing, so. Um, and do you want to say a little bit? No, I don't have too much. I do want to um, thank, and you guys can read the numbers, but um, I want to thank um, Jake's and Mr. Yeah. Bergeron for his his sizable donation that pushed us into this public hearing. But it's been great seeing the the inflow of support for this program, and we look forward to getting the board started and getting this program started in next year. So, yeah. so yeah, um, I, I think that the grants and, yeah. and donations have been just tremendous. Yeah. Far exceeding what I think we anticipated. Mm -hmm. I think we should say, oh, just for everyone listening, the total donations, not tonight it's thirty, almost 35000 but the total to the program is $89,616.73 today. Wow. 
So that's almost that's that's two years. years. We had hoped to raise enough money to fund it for two years. Mm -hmm. It is three. It is impressive how the public have come through. Um, and the donation that Ed mentioned, which is listed as Sugar Face and Company LLC, for those who do not know, that is Jake's, is $27,791.73. So it is a, it is almost a full year, I believe. It is. Within just a couple thousand bucks of yeah. a full year. Yep. So it's amazing. Significant. And we're very <laughs> thankful for all of these donations because there are, are a number of very large donations. So with that, I would entertain a motion to accept this event. I mean, we have to close the public meeting. Oh, wait, before. that's right. I'm yeah, so sorry. Yeah, yeah, this is what happens. <laughs> yeah, comments, <laughs> questions. I, this is what happens when I come late. Not in the comment, I just want to say, Gene Patton, is that I really commend Bruce Bergeron because he really is um, an invaluable community um, person and gives a lot to communities. and. My hat's off to him for doing that. Anybody else in the audience here? Anybody online? We just yeah, we got all that. Exactly. What, David? I mean, I'm, I'm incredibly glad to hear that we have a three-year program that's not costing the taxpayers anything. I think we also need to look ahead to years four, five, and beyond um, to what is this going to cost the taxpayers then? Okay. Anybody else for comment from the public? Okay, seeing none, I'll close, entertain a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. We have a second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, opposed? Abstentions? Yeah, the public hearing is now closed. Aye. Is there any further discussion from the board or would someone like to make a motion? I move that we accept the uh, donations as presented this evening with our most grateful thanks. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those abstentions? Passes unanimously. Thank you all. So that dispenses with the public hearing portion of the meeting. And we are on to approval of the minutes. Let's see. Let's start with December 4th because we have both regular and non public sessions. And I'm sorry, no, I'd like to go backwards. I guess. Well, not backwards. November 20th minutes review. They look good to me, and I would move that we accept them as presented. Oh, you have a second. I will second that. Okay. Are there any discussions on the minutes of November 20th? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Unanimous? Thank you. Okay, now moving on to December 4th, and you have non-public and regular in your packet. Uh, so let's take the public one first, because Jean has written and you have her feedback. Being... I think that was on the November 20th. Oh, it was on the November 20th? Yeah. November 20th. I'm sorry, they were out of order in mine, so. Okay. Well, we can always put it back on the table if you'd like to change the minutes, I guess. I don't, I'd like to put it back on the table just so we can have the discussion. Yeah, no, I'm sorry. And they're out of order in here, so I, I missed that. I apologize. Okay, so somebody who voted in the affirmative can make a motion to put it back on the table. Make a motion to put okay, it back Okay, we have a second. And I'll second that. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Uh, no, it's unanimous. Okay, put it back on the table. Let Jean have a comment. Um, so I'd like to start since I'm the one who asked to put it in the packet. Um, okay. So Jean wrote to me um, and was concerned that she um, saw things, comments that she had made that did not make the meeting minutes. And I just explained that um, while it's not a transcript and not exhaustive, that we could uh, consider putting something in if she wanted to let, uh, let us know whatever points she to do. Um, so go ahead, Jean. So, you know, my point is, and I totally understand, I've taken minutes a lot myself that you can't do a transcript. But I asked about a newly created position, clerk of the works. It wasn't like I was talking about something that's old and been around and graciously answered my question. And neither my question nor the answer was included in the minutes. And it wasn't noted that I was even here. So 
you know, that doesn't give me a good feeling um, about, it makes me, all I can think of is the word hide come to, to mind. I know that's not the intention, but I just feel like when there's new information about a newly created position, um, and I know all of you want to be transparent with the public, that it's important and critical to include that information so that down the road somewhere, someone in the community can't say, gee, I didn't know anything about that. I never saw anything mentioned. So I just, I just feel like since it's a new item, that it should be included in the minutes. And um, I said, I feel like Emily does a great job trying to capture what is needed. And I feel that it's up to the governing body to make sure that what is needed is included. So that's my piece. What's your pleasure? Um, I, I appreciate you bringing this forward. And I know that, um, you know, I hope that if, if people share a concern like this, it's really helpful because it's also challenging to go week to week and remember every item that happened. And so I hope that it could be like, um, that you would feel free to bring a concern to both of our chats. I don't usually keep things to myself. I don't know that. I don't think you're worried about that. Yeah. But I do think, um, do you have a sense of where, so these are numbered, right? And I know you've read them. So where were you thinking it should go? Because honestly, I don't, I don't have language I can add for you. So typically when someone comes to me, I ask them. So the meeting's recorded, correct? Yeah, and that was what my suggestion uh, was. Uh, that's How hard is it to define sort of a section of the meeting and add a little bit to this? It's difficult because this is already a 12 page document and without having a timeline or context. And okay. So it's it's not impossible. It's just we need to narrow the window yep. so that I understand that what I am putting in yep. is accurate to the request. Which is kind of the context of my email dialogue with you was so that we could make that that determination. Um, do you do you know where it was in the minutes that you can go back and listen to the entire video like I did to find my questions? Okay. <clears throat> Aside from the particulars of where it goes, Jean, I want to assure you that your question resulted in a significant discussion of the last budget meeting. That is correct. And so your words had an effect. Yeah. And it was heard by the budget committee and it is under discussion. Well, you know, I'm not trying to like make a big deal out of things, but I just feel like when things are new and it's newly created, then it needs to be noted and not forgotten about. That's yeah, and I think that's why it's it's definitely pertinent if we can figure out where it goes yeah. without having pay Emily to watch two hours a day. Again, again. <laughs> I, I guess in general, my opinion is that minutes can never be perfect. Everybody understands that including right. change. However, if somebody if something does have happen to me, somebody specifically requests that their comments or questions be entered into the public record, mm -hmm. you should honor that request Agreed. as a general mm -hmm. sort of principle of, of keeping these going. Well, so I do think we should find a way to include that within the minutes. Um, in the past, what I, I, I if we look on page 10 in the minutes, line 501. Ms. Patton inquired where the funds would come from. I believe that's the point, right? Exactly. Exactly. Middle of page 10. Yes. So, and that's Line the clerk of the work. So, uh, is it really missing so or is it just the, the context? Yeah, it says a board building quality officer contract. And I guess my question is if we have the heading, we have the language that Ed gave um, works. The paraphrase of what Ed said. Um, we have the motion and then we have her question. What needs to be added? What was the answer? <laughs> Mr. Moore stated that he is looking at the building project funds that could be allocated and he is looking at budgeting some of it as well. And the result of that 
looking at was the discussion at budget as a result of that there's been no decision made per se it was a it was a point of discussion uh, and excuse me because i was a member of the audience for that meeting john is on that board uh, but it was a point of discussion at the budget meeting my my sense is we thought it was probably the way we we're going to have to go my sense of it yeah my, my undergrad we came to a compromise was that it was the clerk of the works ed correct me if i'm wrong the clerk of the works uh money was going to end up in the operating system. and there was a lot of discussion about that at the budget meeting. yeah it was a lengthy discussion yes it was yeah i can and i can I add think some came to a consensus go ahead ed yeah, I can add some. It was exact. I mean, we're we're looking at exactly what I answered, Gene, that um, the larger portions of the payments will come from the two building projects, but there is a little bit of money, I think $20,000 at this point for 2024 in the general fund budget to help offset that cost. So, Gene, if we, <clears throat> in the line 501 that says, Ms. Patton inquired where the funds would come from, would it help if we added the words, the funds come from, for the clerk of works position or something, would that satisfy what you're looking for? And I mean, it's just so you guys can see, it's got kind of a whole highlight, but I know it's a lot to follow along, right? Like when you reference back, sometimes it's good to restate it, even though it's within the section. Well, I, I guess, and maybe I'm just like needing my glasses rechecked too, <laughs> that. I don't see any mention here of clerk of the works position. Line 489. You're, so 488 is the highlighted award building quality officer contract. And then it says, and then parentheses, it says clerk of the works because there's multiple ways that people call this position, right? Um, clerk of the works is kind of the old school one that I know it as, but I think mm -hmm. it's uh, getting, everybody gets a new name for their job now, right? <laughs> Long title. So, um, and so it's called both ways for the, so that it's, I guess, we've kind of got a habit of trying to restate things that might not be plain English and plain English in our minutes. I think that was the goal there, if I'm yeah. being fair. Yeah. Um, so, did you find it on line 49? Yeah. Okay. So, would it help if we added that on line 501? I guess maybe that's. Yeah, I mean, it, that's kind of separated. I yeah, guess. I mean, technically, you're not supposed to end the sentence with a preposition. <laughs> but like from or the newly established. Emily is going to beat me up later on this one. <laughs> and no. the people in attendance should be updated. Yeah, and we'll update the people in attendance. So from for the clerk of the works position, is that? Is that? Okay. Right. 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 Oh, yes, concert, please, yeah. by all means. I'm so sorry. What's the position? So we'll add that, add your name and. Do we have a sign in sheet? I was just no. going to say that was also a meeting that was recorded. Yeah. And, and so I was... the owl does not. So mm -hmm. I completely rely on people mm -hmm. in the audience stating their name. Mm -hmm prior to their statement, yep. but it can lead to confusion with who is in the room. Right, to go back and create an index but, of it later. Okay. Or when it's 12 pages long and I don't make sure that I get every single Yeah, question. so we could, I apologize. that's something we could make sure we do though, yeah. if we're recording yeah. it and, Absolutely. and we don't have a minute taker present, we can toss out a piece of paper and just ask everyone. Also, that'll help us with on name spelling. So there, we've, we've learned a lot tonight. <laughs> Thank you. I Thank you. Okay. So I would entertain a motion to approve as amended. So move. We have a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Yes. Thank you, Jane. Okay. Now we're going to go to the minutes of December 4th. <laughs> there in your packet. This was a relatively short meeting, mercifully, right, all? Um. Does anybody want to make a motion or do they have another thing? I move that we accept them as presented. Second. Are there any questions, comments, or corrections? All right, seeing none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Sentence, it's unanimous. And Emily, you noted that Eric departed, I'm assuming. Yes. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. um, okay, we're on to board reports. Gosh, I can't start with Eric, so I guess it's you in the hot seat, Alice. I know, and I have, I have no updates. 
Awesome. Don't you have something to tell us fun for Eva? There's got to be an activity this week. I think we'll find out about it in just a little bit. Huh? Oh, from, for Eva. Hometown holidays, right? Yeah, hometown holidays is underway, but we haven't met. No, I'm just saying there's activities all week. Oh, right? I mean, <laughs> if you look on the list, you will see that um, Don Archambault, on behalf of Eva, is really putting in double time effort to let everyone know about all of the festivities that are happening all around town for hometown holidays. And it's not just events put on by Eva. The hometown holidays calendar is a collation of trying to be as exclusive as possible of everything that's going on in the town. Um, and it's just a really exciting time. Yeah. John. You know, I left my notes at home. That's Sorry. It. You can tell us next time. Tracy. The Energy Committee has not met since my report of the last select board meeting. However, um, it was made note that in January, the Community Power Group will be uh, rebidding their sources, and it is expected that Liberty Utilities rates will remain higher than Community Power once again, and Community Power will significantly lower their rates as compared to Liberty Utilities. I do want to say one thing about the uh, last budget committee meeting. And as I've said, said, I think about every budget committee thus far, it was a very uh, thoughtful and well-considered discussion. And the clerk of the works issue maybe was the most heated discussion. Mm -hmm. And we came to what I thought was an a, a prompt, appropriate uh, conclusion. Mm -hmm. So it, it's a good bunch of people. Okay. It's a very good group of people, uh, some with some very good math knowledge, mm -hmm. and they're looking very intimately at all the details that they can. Yeah. They're really doing a, a, a very but, credible Without job. getting lost in the weeds. Right. Without getting lost in the weeds. Yeah, absolutely. I would say, from what I've seen, they're making data driven decisions. Yeah, very much so. Yeah. That's great. Did you have um, anything from. No, we did not meet. Okay. We did not meet. However, everyone is aware that we're no longer in the municipal building. Ed, why don't you tell us if you, there's anything from Breadloaf this past few days? I can do that. You ready for my report? Or? Oh. oh, why not? not okay. He looks like he's anxious. I know, <laughs> but we're going to finish one section and then okay. we're going to go to the other. All right, we'll, we'll get back to you, Ed. Uh, we'll, All right, we'll it's in my report. So. Okay. <laughs> Awesome. So um, before I tell you my uh, about Conservation Commission, I just wanted to take a minute to thank every single member of the town team who has taken part in this move because it is monumental. And while some folks are not the ones moving, they are supporting the folks who are moving. So we have people from DPW who are doing moving, who are backfilling. We have the PD doing some juggling to help moving. Um, nobody Nobody is exempt from the great move. And uh, La Salette was found to be in a little more challenging condition in some cases than anticipated. And I wanna give a special thanks to our town manager who may have done some handy person work um, that was significant and made sure that we made it um, without adding the expense of calling in a bunch of <laughs> outside engineers, electricians, um, and made sure that the computers got hooked up and he even, helped handle the coaxial cable to get our internet in place, um, cutting down the time to take to get it installed because, uh, well, you guys may not see the excitement going on in the background. We have a presidential mm -hmm. primary coming up and there were some state deadlines. And so they had to have that internet. Um, someone was gonna get to spend the night. So I think we'd like to thank Ed for that. Um, really quickly, conservation met. Um, not a lot of big topics, just some some updates. Uh, the biggest update being that um, Dr. Tice has resigned effective December 31st, and there will be a vacancy on conservation. Talked uh, a bit about his plans to do some lake water um, testing and monitoring that he's been doing privately. So um, wish him well, and his resignation is a packet later. Now, unless there's any questions on reports, we're going to let Ed go. <laughs> well, thank you. Um, I'll start first by apologizing. I couldn't be there tonight, but I do have a really bad head cold and didn't want to spread it to anybody going into the Christmas holidays or <laughs> or spread it to anybody for any other reason. But thank you. Um, <clears throat> 
Um, to start off, as I normally do, staff report, the Enfield Police Department continues to work through the hiring process. Um, we're still looking at the one officer I've been telling you about. Um, he has one final test in January, early January, but so far we've um, passed all the other tests and we're we're hoping that this last one goes well and we'll be able to bring him on to the police department. Uh, I talked with Chief Holland today, and he also has two other applicants that are showing interest in working for the town, and one of them is currently certified. So we'll be we'll be working through those applications and seeing what we can do to to bring um, two more officers on in the next couple months. Um, DPW is still accepting applications for a winter seasonal plow truck operator and for the janitor slash building maintenance specialist position. So. If you or anybody you know would like to apply for those positions, we'd be happy to take their applications and look through them. Um, <clears throat> a little bit of good news. I would like to report that this year we normally have one, but this year we had two secret Santas come forward. They donated money, gifts, and other items. And it was it was just great to see the the support that our residents give to the other residents that we have that are in, in need. And I'd also like to thank the police and fire departments for their efforts in this in that um, work to make sure that they collected the the gifts and to you know take family shopping and do the things that they need to do. They take some of their own time to do that, and I'd like to thank them for for going above and beyond. Um, <clears throat> Whitney Hall project, like we were talking about, I'm still continuing to work with Breadloaf to finalize the budget and contract. We got a few RFPs back last week that actually raised the budget a little bit. Um, I've been in negotiations with them. I've taken a fine tooth comb through the budget. Last week, I was able to to cut the overage by almost a hundred thousand dollars. So we're we're pretty close now. We're about a hundred and $65,000 over budget, but I do have a couple meetings this week and I'm hopeful that we can we can get that money taken care of and that we can move forward and sign a sign a contract. We are going to sign a contract with a not to exceed amount. So once we know that we can fund um, the budget that we have with the bond that we have passed, then we'll sign that contract and move forward. So both Breadloaf and myself are pretty hopeful that we'll be able to to do that soon. Um, Catamount Environmental has confirmed that they will be at Whitney Hall on January 8th to do the first asbestos abatement from the clerk's vault. We found some asbestos, some um, tile and mastic in there, so they'll be doing that and we'll be ready to, to start construction as soon as we can. And hopefully in early January is what it's looking like now. Um, again, we'll be doing a groundbreaking before the, the start of that construction or soon thereafter. And as soon as we soon as we finalize the contract and set a date, we'll let everybody know and we'll get that get that advertised. Um, <clears throat> as Kate said, the town offices are now up and running at the former La Salette building. Staff's done a great job designing and setting up the offices. I think the flow of the, the offices is going to work well. Um, we're still settling in and solving a few issues, but service the services provided by the town office and staff are all back up and running at this time. Um, the library will be opening January 2nd, um, and they're doing a good job too. I think they're they're close to a point where they may be able to open a little bit early, but I think at this point it's still January 2nd that they, they're looking at. Um, we did have to hire or order a little bit of equipment to get their phones up and running. So those their phones aren't working yet, but everything else is going smooth. Um, <clears throat> I'd like to update the select board. I've taken the liberty to apply for the um, New Hampshire State and Local Cybersecurity Grant Program, and um, we have been awarded that grant. It's a 100% grant for staff members, so I received five slots for our team to take cybersecurity training course issued by the state. Um, as you know, computer threats are received by municipalities on a daily basis, and training along with good IT filters are our number one defense. SimQuest does a great job keeping our filters up and threats down, but people are our weakest link. So the executive team, which is all the department heads, will be taking this training to bring increased awareness to each department. <clears throat> With that, I'd like to thank the DPW. As you guys probably have noticed, we got a little bit of rain in the past couple of days. And I'm happy to report that we had very few flooding issues from the storms of this weekend. We do attribute this to the increased efforts DPW put in this last summer replacing culverts and the purchase of the truck mounted fan. 
Um, DPW crews replaced approximately 20 culverts this year, and then the Maple Street project replaced five more. So we we were up to almost 25 culverts or about 25 culverts this year. Um, and then a lot of the small, a lot of the issues that people had around here on the roads were from leaves and small sticks plugging up culverts that were then overtaken by water and flooded the street. Um, we do believe the use of our new fan kept our ditches clean and allowed water to flow as designed through those culverts. So the fan was um, <clears throat> was a very big help, and we were also able to use it today to quickly remove debris from roads. Uh, they could drive down the roads, blow the bigger debris, some of the branches off the roads to get them open, and then our guys can take the next couple weeks to go through and clean those up and get them back out of our ditches and make sure everything's good. So I'd like to thank um, Jim, Jeremy, and the DPW crew for all their work that they've done this year and helping to to keep us not having some of the problems that other towns are having. Um, <clears throat> with that, we would like to ask people that drive on dirt roads to drive as sparingly as possible on them. Um, we're kind of in a weird rain event. With the rain coming, we do have a frost layer beneath the, the dirt, and this traps the water in those top foot or a few inches of road and it makes the roads really slimy and muddy by avoiding driving on them when not necessary it'll reduce damage done to the road through the marin event so um if you don't have to go there please don't but we do understand people have to travel and get to where they need to go so um dpw also met this last week along with the police department um, with fema staff to scope the projects completed for the recently declared july storm disaster so they'll continue working on on our reimbursements and projects that we may be able to to undertake because of that storm. Um, the Shaker Boulevard bridge project continues to move forward. Um, we, our Jim has worked with Beta Engineering Group and they've completed their draft and scope and fees for the project. Um, I explained this to you guys once before, but it's a long drawn out process to hire someone with a bunch of approvals through the state. So we'll keep you advised how that goes forward, but this won't be like our normal projects where we award something, um, a project to them. It, it has a lot of state approvals and a lot of hoops to jump through before we can get to that, that state. So right now we're in the scope and fee um, process of that and hopefully we can get the fees negotiated in a way where we can get approvals to to hire the beta engineering group um we'll be talking about it later but i like to like to thank the people that have put the time in to to um, apply for the granite states green green fleets grant um, as you guys know we got a fifty six thousand dollar grant a little while back that we accepted and we knew going into that that we may have to forfeit that grant if we received a hundred and eighty thousand dollar grant which we have received word that we have have been awarded as long as it gets approved by governor and council so i just like to thank jeremy for his ongoing efforts on that for applying for the grant and for <laughs> calling epa or not epa des quite often to make sure that they they knew we were interested in and wanting that grant. And um, with that, the last thing I have on my town manager's report is the surplus cruiser has been stripped of all equipment and will be listed for auction later this week. Great. Are there any questions or comments from the board? Questions or comments from the public on the town manager's report? Okay. Let's move down to the business of the evening. As Ed mentioned, um, the Granite State Clean Fleets Award is our next business item. And I don't know if that needs further explanation or if anybody has questions. Basically, the gist of it is we got the smaller grant. We took it right. You don't want to lose that opportunity in case you don't get the bigger one. Now we found out we can get more money. We have to say goodbye to the small amount because we're not allowed to have both. So. Uh, that's what's on the table for consideration. Is that there? Yeah, yeah, I think it's important to note that it's an 80% grant. So the VW Clean Diesel program is offering to pay 80% of our next purchase of a vehicle up to $225,000. And so we're looking at getting rid of one of our older 2006 trucks. That truck will need to be destroyed and removed from service, not traded in or sold. That's part of the grant program, but um, it's a 
it's a big win for the town of Enfield to, to be able to get $180,000 towards the purchase of one of these vehicles. So again, I thank the staff for their hard work on that program. Yeah. Just out of curiosity, Jim, <clears throat> is, um, is this one of the ones that plows one of the bigger, tougher routes? Yes, yeah, it's, um, it would probably be either truck 205 or 206, which um, are the, the big municipal six wheel plow wing sander trucks that you see. Yeah. You know, on the dirt roads primarily. Yep. Um, and they are a Sterling brand with Mercedes diesels in it. And part of the grant is that the diesel engine has to be older than 2009. Mm -hmm. And so both we have two trucks in there. We were replacing one, but that one didn't qualify because it was already in, in in the works. And so this will be for one that will be ordered probably right after now in the mission. Awesome. Does anybody have any questions or comments? No. Do you care to make a motion? Sure. I move to authorize town manager or their designee to forfeit the DERA grant and accept the Granite State Clean Fleets Award awarded by the state of New Hampshire in the amount of 180000 once the grant is approved by governor and council and hereby authorize town manager or their designees to take such actions and execute all documents that may be necessary. Do we have a second? Okay. Discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Uh, Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? It's unanimous. Thank you, and thank you to your team, because, mm -hmm. and it's also a lot of work to do a grant and then say goodbye to it to get another one, and I appreciate that they didn't just stop there. They went for the bigger dollars. That's a big deal for all of us. Okay, down to resolution to adopt FEMA floodplain maps in accordance with RSA 674-57. Amendments to flood insurance rate maps shall apply to local floodplain ordinances upon their adoption by resolution of the local governing body of a municipality and shall require no further action by the local legislative body. So we're the governing body and uh, this is just by way of explanation, we're the governing body and town meeting is the legislative body, if anyone's curious. Um, amendment to the floodplain ordinance was approved at the 2023 town meeting. So, and this is not a, an optional one. This is like, if we want anyone to ever be able to get flood insurance and get paid out, we have to do this. But you wanna expound on that at all or? No, I think you covered it. This is kind of a housekeeping thing that we have to do to, to maintain our, our certification and to be able to offer flood insurance to our residents through the FEMA program. Mm -hmm. So can I just ask yeah. like a mm -hmm. yeah absolutely overall question? I read this a few times and I kept <laughs> getting tripped up on February eighth, twenty twenty four. Is that like the date that this is anticipated to be completed, or like it's? And then at the top it says sample. So might that date change if? If the new study is not completed by then? I believe the study is completed and that's just when it gets enacted. But that's the way yeah. I read it. That's how I saw it. Yeah. Enacted by FEMA. Right. By FEMA, yes. What exactly are we supposed to do with this tonight? Okay, Take the resolution so yeah. that we have the updated maps as part of our mm -hmm. flood ordinance. So this is the the resolution yeah. on the last page. Yep. You want me to read the resolution? Is that why there I you read go. It? Oh, John, you have good reading, Boyd. Do you want to read it? Is that what we see is number what? this one right here? That's um it's like the next page. Oh, the yep. next page. Yeah. There you go. Whereas the town of Enfield, New Hampshire has a floodplain and zoning ordinance originally adopted in March of 1990 and last amended in March of 2023 and consequently participates in the federal flood insurance program of the Federal Emergency Management Agency, FEMA, administered through the state of New Hampshire Office of Planning and Development's New Hampshire Floodplain Management Program. We, the Enfield New Hampshire Select Board, hereby adopt the following Resolution. Oh my goodness, do I have to read this? I nominated you for a reason. Pursuant to RSA 674 57, 
by resolution of the Board of Selectmen, all lands designated as special flood hazard areas by the Federal Emergency Management Agency, FEMA, in its flood insurance study for the County of Grafton, New Hampshire, dated February 8th, 2024, together with the associated flood insurance rate maps panels 33009C1110F and 33009C1120F, dated February 8th, 2024, and 33009C0916E, 33009C0917E, 33009C0918E, 33009C0919E, 33009009, I'll start over, 33009C0938E, 33009C0939E, 33009C0943E, 33009C1080E, 33009C1085E, 33009C1095E, 33009C1101E, 33009C1103E, 33009C1105E, and... 33009C1115E, dated February 20th, 2008, are declared to be part of the Town of Enfield Zoning Ordinance and are hereby incorporated by reference. You have someone make a motion to approve this resolution. I so move. Fabulous. You deserve to. We have second. second. Okay. Um, is there any discussion? I just have one question. Yeah. So if this thing that is going to happen on February 8th, 2024, if this affected anyone's flood plane status, would they be notified? Hmm. I mean, the federal government does what they want, whether we we just hang out with them. I hate to say it. I know. <laughs> I would believe they already would have been notified. Um, we've been getting letters on and off over the year as they've been studying these so yeah i would assume so but i don't know that for sure so i typically <clears throat> like if you look around the lakes and stuff it, they go through various phases so i'll just pick on my family because they're about 20 feet up high on a hill and at one point they were drawn into the flood map which made no sense right. so you can go individually as a homeowner and um, it usually takes some help from a congressperson to be quite honest and then they they redraw around you and so i assume they're not the only ones who go through this lovely process but fema is constantly redrawing their flood maps and, and so apparently some of the land around 4a uh in the commercial district is in the floodplain because of the Baltic Bill Dam. Oh, four. 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 Yeah. Four. I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah. 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 Quite yeah. My tongue. yeah. No, it's still it, the, it the is land fun. across from Ziggy's. Yeah. yeah. It's considered yeah. part of the floodplain mm -hmm. primarily because of the Baltic mm -hmm. Dam. Then there's quite been questions in the past that we've discussed about not that it's our dam, but you know what would happen if it was lowered by X amount of two feet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, whatever number of feet. So I think it's just a constantly evolving and we, FEMA tells us. And so none of the maps as I read it are actually new. It's mm -hmm. a reaffirmation okay. of maps that are out there. Okay. I think you're right. Yeah. yeah. That's what I was trying to yeah. If anyone was caught in it that wasn't in it before, there are mm -hmm. options out of it in terms of resurveying their mm -hmm. property or Or at least making sure that you have the insurance you're required to appear. Yeah. If you have a mortgage, your bank may require you to have flood insurance. That's right. Okay. And I would say if somebody has trouble, though, it is a good avenue to contact your your federal level um, delegation because those are the folks who typically can push something through. Um, so if there's something that's nonsensical and you find that you're in a flood zone, you really shouldn't be. They're pretty good about helping on that. 
It just caught my eye because it looks like two. I'll, I'll let it go. But two of the maps panels do have this future date. All of the other ones mm -hmm. do seem incorporated in 2008. Two of them have been there. No, I think that's a fair point. Okay, so we have a motion and a second on the table. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of approving the resolution? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstention? Passes unanimously. Thank you, John, for humoring me and reading that so everyone could. One, one more time. Yeah. <laughs> no. But John is so good at reading. Yeah. That's why. The next time I'll read it backwards, right? Oh, here's a that was a joy. Um, okay, so we have a review and approval of encumbrances of 2023 budget items to 2024, including but not limited to New Hampshire retirement contributions, master plan update funding. And so just for the benefit of everyone here, um, Ed, before you pick it off, I mean, I'm assuming you're doing this. Do you want to just explain um, for someone who's never run into an encumbrance what it is in plain English for folks? Yeah, I think the, the easiest way to boil it down is when we have a contract with someone already to, to make payments, but it's going to span the calendar year, then we can encumber that money from one budget to the next. Really what it does is it takes the money that we have left over from this year and we move it into an encumbrance line into next year's budget to, to be able to complete the project. <clears throat> so um, with that, we can go through them really quickly. Um, New Hampshire retirement system. Um, long story short, um, the town of Enfield went through a finance change in our finance software and the New Hampshire retirement system went through a change in their software. And between the changing in software, and we're not the only ones, um, there's people all over the state that are having this problem. We um, we have not necessarily sent a check to New Hampshire retirement. That's not going to affect anybody's retirement. We have been showing the expense on the books. So just to be safe and make sure that we have this covered, we're asking to encumber uh, the balance of $77,029.24 to make sure that we're able to make that payment as needed once the computer softwares talk to each other. Um, <clears throat> The executive contract is the strategic planning. Um, I'll give you a slight update now, but I meant to put it in my town manager report, but we were going to do a presentation to you tonight with the move and everything that went on. We weren't 100 percent ready, so it looks like it'll be the second meeting in January when we'll present the strategic plan to the select board. But with that, we have. Um, We've paid $10,000 to date and we're going to encumber the balance of the $10,000 for the strategic planning. Um, project. Um, the invasive species project, we had budgeted $46,000. We request to encumber $20,000 of the unexpended balance of $25,969 for contracted invasive species project expenses. Um, with that, I may use that to, to continue this project and, and lower the budgeted request for next year, which will help the taxpayers in the long run. Um, the master plan, um, as you know, we've had some issues with our contractors on that, and the planning board continues to work from that. They were received $25,000 from unassigned fund balance. We have signed a contract with the new contractors and would like to move that $25,000 to complete that project in next year. And that's the encumbrances that we're bringing forward for this year. Um, there's one additional. Uh, there's one additional, yes. Go ahead, Elisa. So the uh, the revaluation line, there's a balance remaining of ten thousand nine hundred and ninety eight dollars, and he's currently working on projects. He just has not billed us for some of the work in December. There might be a little bit of overlap into next year, uh, so we're asking to encumber that balance of the contract price. Okay. Just get that. Uh, are there questions or comments on this? Um, the board. No. So anybody in the public have a question or a comment? I I know it's a little accounting isn't fun. In the weeds. Uh, it's, I'm like accounting. Yeah, you know, all the time it isn't fun. All right. Um, I would entertain a motion, and I'd ask when you make the motion that you just add that revaluation after a master plan, so that that is included. I'll I'll make a motion to approve the 2023 encumbrances for the New Hampshire Retirement System Employer Paid Retirement Executive Contracted Services Invasive Species Project Master Plan and 
revaluation revaluation work um, as presented. Okay, do we have a second? Second. Okay. Any further discussion on the motion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? It passes unanimously. Thank you very much. Um, all right, we are down. Um, let's see, we have a Mascoma Lakeside Park resignation. Um, effective. Yeah, no, yeah um, we'll take them one at a time. Um, from Meredith Smith, effective immediately. I'd entertain a motion. I'll make a motion. Um, I'll make a motion to accept the resignation of Meredith Smith from the Mescoma Lakeside Park Committee, which she served as chair with recognition of her tireless efforts and endless time contributed in making Mescoma Lakeside Park the reality that exists now. Sure. We have a second. Second. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Passes unanimously. Okay. Uh, we have a resignation from Heritage. Uh, from Meredith Smith. Does that entertain a motion? I move we accept the resignation of Meredith Smith from the Heritage Commission. Heritage. Effective immediately. And we thank her for her hard work and significant achievements. We have a second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed abstentions of unanimous. Okay. Um, Conservation Commission. You have a resignation from Dr. Gerald Tice, uh, effective December 31st, 2023. Uh, can I entertain a motion? I'll make a motion to um, accept the resignation of Dr. Tice from the Enfield. Conservation Commission with gratitude for his longstanding uh, support of the natural resources of NPS. Yeah. We have a second? Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Passes unanimously. And so for the benefit of the public and folks who may see this online, we will have um, positions available. Uh, and so you can find the form to volunteer to become a committee member online or you can inquire with the office if you need help and then you submit it to Elisa for consideration. Let's see. Moving. I'll make a plug for Heritage. It is really, really interesting. It yeah. can be quite fun. So I really hope that we can find more people. Awesome. Thank you. Um, and now we are down to, I'm going to take my purview as chair, um, community nursing. The appointments are going to be done and discussed in a non-public session. So do we have administrative items to, we can send around to um, sign and we'll sign those while we. Kate, did you guys accept the resignation of Nancy White? I don't, she is an elected official. So do we, it says informational, no action required. Okay. Me too. I don't. Do we need to? It's because she's one of the supervisors. I think they accept her. And the select board is not the appointing body. Mm, really. Okay. Thank but you. I would say I think um would like to thank Nancy White for her time. Uh Nancy has I don't even know how many years she's put into this. Yeah, a lot. <laughs> I can't remember a time really going to vote when Nancy wasn't around. Maybe Dave remembers. I'm uh, not sure that I did. So, so that but gives that you an idea. Been about 30 plus years. Yeah. And I mean I'm 43 and I've been around for a hot minute during voting, even though I didn't get to vote back then. So um, Nancy has graciously resigned and she's doing it effective January 19th so that the position can go on the ballot um, so that somebody could file for the position if they want instead of simply being appointed. She um, has the opportunity, the supervisors are allowed to appoint her to fill the rest of the position out. So that means we won't necessarily have a vacancy in the, the sense that um, we won't have anybody helping them out during that time period, but it will be able to be placed on the ballot. So I thank you. Um, it's good communication with the town office and with Nancy uh, to get that done and make sure there's an opportunity maybe for someone the next generation to spend, who knows, 40 something years of this. <laughs> so, so what's the date of the presidential primary? 23rd. I mean, yeah. yeah you know, that's something we, 
maybe not us as, as the select board, but mm -hmm. the town needs to be thinking about. Mm -hmm. uh, my understanding is that we may need extra hands for that. Yeah. There'll be a lot of right in. It is well publicized from a lot of towns are saying they're going to need extra pairs yeah. of hands. Yeah. I think um, we'll we'll check in with Lindsay since she yeah. coordinates that. Um, yeah. But yeah, I think it's well. And I, the length of both party ballots that we oh have my goodness is significant. So uh, and definitely mind boggling. Um, yeah. yeah. And Everyone and his cousin is on the ballot. Yes. And their cousins. Yes. Yeah. The, and a, and a the, free town, pony. the town clerk has requested additional funding for ballot clerks, knowing that that's been yeah. the case. Okay, yeah. that's a very wise decision. Absolutely. Thank you for bringing. And we that. will certainly support that. I'm sure. Yeah. Absolutely. And I would say, um, in terms of supervisor of the checklist, a lot has changed over the years, right? This used to be, you know, <laughs> paper ledger and. It's been converted. Um, there were years with many years with Jim Girding, um, and then there was the big conversion into the computer system. And I'm not sure the state has joined us in the modern era. I think their software is still in DOS, and they, if they leave a space after your name, you can't find yourself. So it, there's a lot to unpack. That being said, everything's getting more modern. And so somebody who's interested in spending some time and growing and learning, they're a really nice team. Of people doing a really yeah, important generational job. Generational tech expertise. <laughs> right. Yeah. But I think also it's just yeah. it, the, the intent is to make sure that our friends and neighbors can vote and have their vote heard. Um, sure. And they're wonderful teams. So if someone wanted to be, it's a great way to chip in and, and help out. And, and also there's snacks, lots of snacks. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that's my plug because that's a very important role and I don't want it to, to go unnoticed. So, um, the, okay, this was the one I'm signing, right? But does she have to be replaced for the 23rd? We need her. So she's going to, they can reappoint her to fill out the rest of that slot, but by resigning effect of the 19th, that is in time for it to get printed onto. Oh, understood, but she'll still participate. In yeah. if, like, if she so chooses. If, if she, she so chooses. She um, all the coven for sign. Okay. Thank you. I didn't reach. Um, she needs to at that point, I believe. Yeah, something. yeah, and that was, and that was good planning on our. I, I would like to acknowledge that our town has really come a long way on transitions, and I, I definitely appreciate it because then we don't have to scramble as much later, which is, is always sad. Um, while we're signing these, I would entertain public comments. So, does anyone in the public have any comments? As a as a member of the uh, Mask on the Way side, but I I know that there are those in my list is like me have had um, areas of, of, of this where uh, we didn't agree with, with Meredith, but I don't think that any of us uh, uh, on the committee or in the town uh, leadership um, you know, have uh, um, any yeah, qualms about uh, uh, committing her for the amount of contribution that she has made. Um, I just don't have the familiarity with the Heritage Committee uh, uh, Commission and uh, uh, to say about that, uh, seen it on the select board um, that as that well as, uh, as the exact part of that I sign on. Um, it's going to be a big more generation. Oh, we need to let that. Thank you, Dave. Yes, absolutely. Um, a lot of people put a lot of really hard work in, and Meredith is certainly probably chief among them. So that is fabulous. Thank you for acknowledging. Any other public comments? Any folks online have a public comment? I'm trying not to rush folks. Okay. Seeing none, I will entertain a motion to go into non-public session in accordance with RSA 91A-3, colon, Roman numeral 2, parentheses, small c. So moved. Okay. Second. Okay. Do we, we need a yes? Yes. 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 Um, Thank you guys hey. for coming. Yes. Hey. And see if Emily is going to say. Yeah, I would I would ask the select board if they would invite Emily in and maybe yeah. Elisa to run the teams. That yeah. Um, unless one of you wants to run teams, would you be okay with Elisa staying to run it? Absolutely okay. Or would you be okay no with Emily staying to help us with the discussion and would you yeah. please? Fabulous. Please. Thank you for agreeing to that. Thank you for coming this evening. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll give Jim a minute. 